Here are some interesting facts about PCO2. We probably all know that PCO2 is a major regulator of cerebral blood flow after brain injury. Derangements of PCO2 have been thought to worsen clinical outcomes after many forms of brain injury by altering cerebral blood flow and increasing cerebral ischemia. Hypocapnia and hypercapnia are known to be associated with poor clinical outcomes in traumatic brain injury and pediatric post-cardiac arrest, and hypocapnia has also been associated with poor clinical outcomes in mechanically ventilated adult patients suffering stroke. Now in circulation, researchers report on data relating to a simple idea. Would titrating ventilation to maintain an ideal PCO2 after cardiac arrest improve patient neurological outcome? That would allow for a simple therapeutic approach to help attenuate the brain injury. It's important to point out that the 2010 American Heart Association guidelines for cardiopulmonary resuscitation recommend maintaining PCO2 in the 40 to 45 millimeter mercury range after resuscitation. However, there is paucity of data on the prevalence of PCO2 derangements during the post-cardiac arrest period and its association with outcome. The researchers analyzed a cardiac arrest registry at a single academic medical center and used arterial blood gas data during the first 24 hours after resuscitation to determine whether patients had exposure to hypocapnia and or hypercapnia defined as a PaCO2 of less than 30 millimeters mercury and a PaCO2 of greater than 50 millimeters mercury, respectively. They then used multivariable logistic regression adjusted for factors known to predict poor outcome to determine if hypocapnia or hypercapnia were independent predictors of poor outcomes. Now, I'll bet you that you'll be surprised that 27% of patients had hypocapnia, 33% had hypercapnia, and 9% had both, a total of 69% of the patients. 74% of those patients had poor neurological outcome. And here's what the researchers found. Hypocapnia and hypercapnia were independently associated with poor neurological function with an odds ratio of almost 2.5. The recommendation from these data, it seems so simple. After resuscitation, keep tight control of PCO2 at 40 to 45 millimeters mercury during the post-resuscitation period. Sounds easy enough, but apparently it's not that easy to achieve. And of course, we need a clinical trial to prove it really makes a difference. I'm Peter Block, and this is a Cardiosource Heart Minute.